All right, folks, so today Zwift is launching their new Zwift Play dedicated game controllers. And these are basically kind of the next natural evolution when it comes to riding indoors on Zwift, where they not only allow you to control many aspects of the game without needing to take your hands off the handlebars, but they also have built-in controls for steering as well as braking. And they have a couple other neat tricks up their sleeve too. Now, I don't have the Play controllers in front of me for this actual filming, but I was able to get a hands-on with them last week. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you in today's video was my experience with them. And I gotta say that I think I think these are going to be pretty popular because they really did enhance the riding experience by just not having to fumble around with another device that's away from my bars. I could just kind of ride. So right now, when it comes to controlling aspects within Zwift, we have a few different options based on what kind of device that we're using. So if we're using a PC, we're using the keyboard and or a mouse. If we're using an iPad, we're touching the screen. And if we're using an Apple TV, we have to use that remote. But with these new Zwift Play controllers, it pretty much puts all those controls right there on your handlebars where you can form many of the same functions that we would normally do, like navigating through menus, enabling power-ups, or giving ride-ons. All through these controllers without having to take your hands off the bars, fumbling with a keyboard, trying to touch a touchscreen with sweaty hands, or God help us trying to use a second gen Apple TV remote. But in addition to making it just much more convenient to use Zwift itself, these new Zwift Play controllers also have built-in controls for steering as well as braking, and they've even added some new in-game functionality to highlight some of those features, which we'll talk about in just one bit. So first up, let's go ahead and talk about pricing. So they're available right now at an introductory price of $99, and the price will increase a little bit later on down the road. And the reason for this is that these are being rolled out as a Zwift beta experience because the full game experience isn't completely built out quite yet. So some of the screens I'll be showing you today in this video may not be exactly the same when you go to use them, but the main concept should all remain the same. But another reason that they're rolling these out as a beta experience is that they also want to get feedback from the Zwift community on what you all like and what you may not like. And here's where you can save a few bucks if you want to experience these right now while also be able to contribute to what works well and what could be improved. And by the way, the hardware itself is completely final. That's actually not the beta part. It's just that the software side of things will be enhanced a lot more as time goes goes on. So at its core, the new Zwift Play are very much like a video game controller where they have a D-pad on one side of the controller, then buttons on the other side. It's just that it's two separate pieces so you can attach them on each side of your handlebars. But along with those controls, they also have these additional paddles on the front of the controllers for steering as well as braking. And then when it comes to installation, these really could not get any more simple where they just tuck underneath your hoods, you just wrap around the elastic strap and then hook it into place, that's it. And when it comes to ergonomics, I think they did a really good job here where they really do feel very natural when you're riding. You don't really need to contort your hand into any weird positions or anything like that to use these controllers. So when your hands are on top of the hoods, the D-pad on the left controller and the buttons on the right controller are basically exactly where you'd expect them to be to use them with your thumb. When it comes to the steering and the braking controls though, this is where you kind of have a few different options to choose from depending on your preference. So you could very well use these with your index finger if you'd like. But what I also found is that if you like to have your hands more on the front of your hoods with your index finger on the brake lever, you could even use your middle finger or your ring finger to use the steering slash braking paddles. Now you will notice that the steering and braking paddles are right behind your brake levers. And I was initially concerned about how tight this would be with my fingers. And although it appears that there's not much room, I actually didn't have an issue there. And they did also tell me that they went through a bunch of testing with different types of handlebars and shifter brake lever combinations just to make sure there's as much compatibility as possible. And they did also mention that my access rival levers were likely one of the tighter fits when it came to these controllers. But again, I didn't have any issues. So getting to the actual in-game experience, when it comes to pairing and setup, it's very straightforward, just like pretty much any other accessory. What you'll do once you get to the pairing screen in the game is you'll press the right controller to turn it on and then press the left controller. And then from there, it should show up as an option under the steering devices. And the right controller, by the way, is the primary connection to the game. So what happens here is that the left controller pairs to the right controller and then the right controller pairs to the game itself. Now, if you're using something like an Apple TV with limited Bluetooth connections and you also want to use a heart rate monitor, what you can do there is just pair your heart rate monitor and or your Zwift Play controllers with the Zwift Companion app. Oh, and then if you're using a Zwift Hub, what you can do there is you can use the Bluetooth Bridge functionality to pair your controllers with the Hub, so that's an option there as well. So just for a quick rundown of what you can do with the actual controllers, here's the initial setup and tutorial that you'll see when you first pair the controllers. And they did mention that these screens may change a bit with some game updates, but the overall idea should be the same. So just like any video game controller, you'll use the D-pad on the left controller to navigate, and then on the right controller, you use the A button to select, and then the B button to go back. And then the Z and Y buttons perform some specific functions that we'll talk about in just one second. And then for the steering controls, all you do is just tilt the paddles on either controller to turn left or right, and then you can also tilt those same paddles inwards to initiate braking. 
And then in addition to all those controls, they even have some textured side buttons, which are used to adjust the intensity during a workout to either increase or decrease your trainer resistance. And then you can also use the Y button during workouts to skip a workout block. So when it comes to navigation, this can be used both before you start actually riding as well as while you're riding. So you can use that D-pad to scroll through all the menus and stuff like that. And then you can use the A button to select and the B button to go back. And I gotta tell you, being someone that uses an Apple DB quite a bit for Zwift, this is so much better than that second gen remote that I have that basically is impossible to use, especially when my hands are sweaty. And then within the game, when you're actually riding, if you press the up arrow, this brings up the action menu. So here's where you can take screenshots, enable the copy stop mode, or use the new teleport feature or anything else basically in that action menu. And then there's also some dedicated shortcuts with the Z and Y button. So if you hold down the Z button, that's a ride on bomb where it gives ride ons to other riders around you. If you press the Y button, that enables power ups. And then you can also make a U-turn by holding down the down button. And then in addition to all that, you can use the D-pad as well as the A button to select a route when those options show up. So when it comes to the actual steering experience, here's where you can use this within free riding to either draft or move around other riders. You can also use that steering functionality to cut in on corners for the fastest line. Basically all the little tricks that you could do with the Elite Sturzo. But they also have a new Repack Ridge experience they're now calling Repack Rush, which is very much like a true video game where you can use the steering controls to collect these little green coins, which are time bonuses. But then you also wanna avoid the red hazards what they have on the road that will actually slow you down. And then you can also steer towards those blue areas, which are basically like speed boosts. And it's actually a really fun experience trying to get faster with you every time that you do it. Now, when it comes to how natural the steering feels, what's cool about the steering paddles is that they're actually pressure sensitive. So it's not just like an on and off button. If you push them just lightly, it's just more of a veer than a steer. And then if you push harder, the more you'll steer in one direction or the other. But I did find them to be a little bit sensitive though, even with light taps, but I only did have a couple hours with them. And I'm sure with more time, I could probably get used to them more, but that was just more my initial impression. And they don't have any sensitivity adjustments at the moment, like what you could find on a Elite Sturzo, but again, I just probably need more time with them to get used to the feel. And then when it comes to braking, that's where you can use that feature within Repack Rush as well, where you may need to slow down or let's say corner or something like that. But I suppose you could also use that feature within free riding if you happen to go too far in front of your pace partner group. And just like steering, braking is also pressure sensitive. And then finally, with workout functionality, you can use those textured side buttons to adjust resistance either up or down. And that was really convenient. And then you can also hold down the Y button to skip a workout block. Oh, and then lastly, when it comes to charging and battery life, these charge via USB-C and there's a little rubber flap on the front of each controller to charge them and they come with a dual sided cable so you can charge them both at the same time and they didn't give me exact battery life specs but they said that they should last a really long time before having to charge them sorry i wish i had a little bit better answer for you there but overall though there's a lot to like about these new zwift play controllers it really does seem like the next natural progression when it comes to riding on zwift it just added a really seamless experience where i could control pretty much every aspect of the game without having to take my hands off the handlebars plus it frees up my phone because i don't necessarily need to use the companion app unless I want to use specific things like viewing the map. And as you can see from the current experience, the core functionality is all there, but there's certainly still a ton of opportunities here how they can actually leverage these controllers for even more functions within the game. So for me, 99 bucks seems like not a bad deal for this kind of functionality, even right now with this beta experience. The one thing I would like to see are some sensitivity settings for the steering, but again, I only had a limited amount of time with them and that could just be a me thing, but thankfully that's just something that could be added via software update in the future. And we'll also have to see how the reception is from other reviewers as well as the rest of you out there what you think of the steering functionality. And it is sort of a bummer that they're not necessarily designed for mountain bike handlebars but they really did put a lot of thought into the ergonomics with road handlebars and they do really feel very natural using them. Anyhow that's the new Zwift Play controllers and if you have any questions about them that I didn't cover in this video make sure to leave those in the comment section down below and on your way down there if you found the information in this video useful do me a favor and hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports tech videos that are coming soon. Thanks so much for watching. Happy riding and we will see you in the next video.